<laughs> I'm filming this video with a big old squirmy goofy dog in my lap. But today we're talking about PlayStation Plus Premium because they finally have a good month. Oh, you getting down? Okay, well, goodbye there, Gus. You know, the last year or so, it felt like PlayStation Plus is something I had because I had to have it. You know, it was one of those things where I needed it for basic online play. I needed simply PlayStation Plus Essential to get cloud saves and stuff like that. But finally, we have a completely jam-packed month. We have a bunch of games for the extra tier, the premium tier, that makes me actually happy to have such an expensive service and i want to talk about that what's up gamers dreamcast guy here hi hope you're having a great day if you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already so here we go this is the playstation blog and they just unveiled the entire setup and honestly this is the first time where there is so many games being released this month on the service this doesn't even cover it. This is just a couple of the games. Uh, it's such a gigantic W. Their tweet announcing this is completely exploding. And every single reply is saying, great month. Holy heck, huge W. Nice collection. D Devil May Cry 5. Yes. It's like everybody is saying, well, this, this guy says uh, it sucks. But it's crazy good. Now, let's go through it bit by bit, because honestly, I'm extremely excited about it. Now, to be clear, this is every tier of the service. Still, I believe one of the strangest choices that Sony made about the idea of PlayStation Plus is now the fact that there's Essential, which is just online, Extra and Premium. Extra giving you more games, more like PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 stuff, and then Premium, which is the retro games. Now, I have said in the past, I wish we would get more actual retro games, more stuff that Sony already owns. I mean, stuff like Siphon Filter 3. You know, I love this game. Oh, wait, that's actually the freaking game of the month. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> so here we go. Back for Blood. Now, this is by the people that originally created Left 4 Dead. At launch, I didn't particularly love this game. It felt like it needed a lot of patches and updates to get it up to snuff. Now it is finally feature complete. It has a ton of big free updates. God, I mean, I'm probably going to replay this game now just because one of the things I love personally as a guy who platinums a lot of games is that uh, stuff like this that's always online, whenever it gets put onto PlayStation Plus or Xbox Game Pass and stuff like that, there is a huge flood of completely new players that a lot of times are happy, they're positive, they're learning about the game. This is, I mean, in my opinion, in a big way, this is going to make Back for Blood fun again. Oh my god, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Oh, that's so good. I'm obsessed with Dragon Ball Z. I love Fighter Z already, so that's going to be freaking great. Build your dream team. If you haven't played it, it is a fighting game. You pick three heroes, you fight people up. It feels like Marvel vs. Capcom, but just freaking Dragon Ball Z. Devil May Cry Special Edition. Oh, okay, now... Of all the games we're getting this month, this, in my opinion, is the biggest W by far. I love Devil May Cry 5. I actually gave it a 10 out of 10 when I originally reviewed it, but I played it back on Xbox. I mean, at the time, I would kind of alternate consoles for my third-party games. I want to try and play this on PlayStation 5 just to get the trophies, and honestly, it's a great excuse to play through a such, such a good game uh, for a, a second time. Life is Strange Before the Storm. Honestly, I don't really care about this. Um, actually, wait, I already beat this. I beat Life is Strange Before the Storm already. These interactive storybook games are cool sometimes. I'm just really not in the mood for that right now. The original Life is Strange is also going to be on there. Good for them. Cyanar Wild Hearts and Jet the Far Shore. I have heard both good things about these. These are little tinier indie games. Very cool. This is a dreamy arcade game about riding motorcycles, skateboarding, dance dance battling, shooting lasers, and wielding swords while breaking hearts at 200 miles an hour. Journey through this custom-written pop soundtrack, chase scores, and set out to find the harmony of the universe. You know what? That's a pretty dang good blurb. I'm definitely going to be freaking playing that. I've never played Sayonara Wild Hearts. I've never played Jet the Far Shore, but the original trailers of it kind of made it look like indie No Man's Sky. Now, these next couple of games are things that I feel like people are going to be excited about because they're free. 
Just Cause 4 Reloaded. It's basically Just Cause 4 Remastered. Uh, you know, or it's a content update. It's a bunch of new stuff that wasn't in the original game. It's bigger and better. It's a good excuse to blow stuff up. If you've never played Just Cause, that's literally the story. You're just trying to blow stuff up, but that's pretty freaking fun and addictive, to be honest. Omno, I've never heard of. Erica, I've never heard of. But now we get to the part of this that I am the most happy about. I am ecstatic. The number one thing I have been begging Sony to do is actually release more PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. And this month, we got three big PlayStation 1 games. Oh my gosh. I'm hoping these have full uh, trophy support, especially Siphon Filter 3. The Siphon Filter original trilogy, these games are so freaking goofy. They're very much based on Mission Impossible, like a series of incredibly ridiculous breaking into museums and fighting people to the death with air tasers and stuff. It's difficult to overstate how good the original Siphon Filter games are. So I am extremely satisfied that this is coming back. Next, Star Wars Demolition. Uh, yeah, there was this weird time in the early 2000s where it felt like everybody was obsessed with destruction derbies, uh, car combat in general. I have no idea what happened if we all had like a collective brain damage, but they made a Star Wars destruction derby game. I personally do not like this game very much, but I'll install it and try it. I mean, heck, I already paid for the service. And then Hot Shots Golf 2. Yes, this is a great freaking setting. Now, Sony, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. You own these games. Sony actually has a big catalog of back stuff. They have PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games that they fully have the rights to, the data to, the ability to port at any time. They're just being stingy for pretty much no reason. Release Legend of Dragoon. Talk to somebody like Square Enix and bring forward something like Brave Fencer Musashi or Xeno Gears. I mean, heck, I'd be super happy if we just got Grandia 1 or Grandia 2 or even Grandia 3. Like, that guess that's my biggest thing is that they keep releasing these more action focused games, games like, uh, you know, Siphon Filter. They all they release the original Resident Evil. I kind of want to see them bring out their RPGs, the thing that made the PlayStation one so legendary, in my opinion, is that big catalog of turn based combat. I mean, you guys clearly have a tight partnership with Square Enix with how many games they're releasing exclusively on the PlayStation 5, I don't know, sweeten them up, talk to them, just do whatever it takes to convince them to actually put those games, those retro classics that aren't on any other platform, put them on PlayStation Plus Premium. I guess that's just my thoughts. This is a very, very, very good month. If we start to get months this good throughout 2023, I mean, I think this is what we always hoped it would be. This, to me, feels closer to a Game Pass competitor. Game Pass is definitely good because the catalog is just hundreds and hundreds of games for so cheap. The fact that this is, if you want to get the premium tier, it is still $18 a month. This is getting more worth the money at last. But what do you think about it? Are you excited for these games? I know I freaking am. Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And please, if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Oh yeah, I talked about a rumored Xbox event. They finally confirmed it today. There's going to be a big Xbox event on uh, January 25th. I'm going to be watching it and no Starfield, but it sounds like it's going to be a good time anyways.